Oh, wow. What happened? Let's see. I just want to make sure you guys can see me. I don't know what's going on right now. <laughs> okay, there we go. Okay, so you can hear me, it looks like. Yeah, there we go. Now you can hear me, if you couldn't before. So the first thing you want to do, um, if you've already done the start here, um, I hope you have, because now this is the start of week one. So click on the weekly course content, and you should have already seen this video. If I mean, if, you should have already found this video if you're watching it, of course. So I'm going to kind of be brief with this. Uh, but click weekly course content, week one, and in the future, there'll be week two, week three, week four, all the way down to week 16. And let's see. So here comes week one. And in here, of course, you'll see this video. It'll be posted on top. But after that, um, I'm going to kind of walk you through this week, and I'm going to help you kind of figure out what to do. So writing project one guidelines. Go ahead and open that up. And it might take a second. If you're like my um, my Wi-Fi, my, my, my Internet connection, um, it might take a little while. So let's see. It's, it's actually kind of a small document. There we go. Okay, so this is your first assignment. We have four writing projects. Oh, sorry, I keep looking at the camera, but it's not on. You have four writing projects, and the first one is a reflective narrative. And this kind of spells out what a reflective narrative is, but really what it is, is I want you to think of a social issue. And I could, like I said in my introduction video for the course, that can be anything you want. That can be, uh, as long as it's a problem, a conflict of some kind. Um, that could be uh, abortion, it could be gun laws, it could be drug laws, it could be legalizing marijuana, it could be uh, abuse, it could, it could be your, your friend Tommy spends way too much time on the computer and you, you need him to stop because you want Tommy to go out and socialize with you. And so um, anything, and it can be as big or as small as long as the conflict. And so for this assignment, you're basically going to write a, your, a story about your experience with this issue, whatever it is. So if your issue is Tommy not going out because he plays on his computer too much, then it's going to be your explanation of that story. So for this assignment, write a three to four page reflective narrative. That's basically where you reflect on an experience you've had with this significant social issue. Now it says significant, but that's just what that means is, just, is it has to be a significant, it has to be an issue of some kind. Um, you identify a purpose, audience, and genre, which we'll talk about. Uh, social experience, which you'll have to do. Um, we'll develop a thesis next week. It will write the narrative and we'll describe its importance in your life because remember this is a reflective narrative. You're reflecting on an event in your life. So it can't really be uh, something you haven't had experience with. So if you come up and, and like a lot of people pick uh, something like racism. If you pick racism and you've never experienced racism in your life, well then that might be a problem. However, if you've been watching the news then technically racism has you know ha impacted your life in some form or fashion. You can talk about how you've seen these events on TV and how they've changed your life you know for the better or for the worse or whatever. Um, so again, identify purpose, audience, and genre. Uh, let's see. And I'm not going to go through all this. Kind of, read through it, and it's not. I mean, it's, it's just basically a general description. Really, what it is, you have to figure out who is it that you're trying to write this. This uh, was first of all. Sorry, let me back up a second. With purpose, for example, every time you write an essay, you should have a purpose. Why are you writing that essay? Are you writing it to achieve something? Which you should answer yes. And if when you do answer yes, uh, then what is it that you're really trying to achieve? Are you trying to get people to go out and vote? Are you trying to get people to stop being racist? Are you trying to get Tommy to get off the computer and come socialize with you? What is that purpose? And once you figure out that purpose, then you need to find out what audience can help you achieve that purpose. So if you're writing about Tommy, getting up off the computer, there's only a few people you can write to. You can write to Tommy, telling him, writing him a reflective narrative essay about how, why he should get up off the computer. You can maybe write it to Tommy's mom, Tommy's girlfriend. Uh, well, he doesn't get off, he doesn't leave his house, so he probably doesn't have a girlfriend. Well, maybe he has an internet girlfriend, I don't know. Anyways, um, you find out who you can write to to help you achieve that purpose. And then, of course, the genre. Now, the genre, I mean, you can change it to be the story. The genre of your story could be something like a, a horror genre, or um, a mystery genre, or an adventure genre. Whatever type of genre you can use to apply. And these are the same types of genres as movies. And I'll have a video. Um, I have a video already out there that, that explains these three things. Um, once you've done that, um, you should also have a social issue, and I, I've kind of talked about that a little bit already. So check that out. Um, develop a thesis. And we'll talk about that next week, developing a thesis. I use an acronym that kind of helps you uh, to write that. So that'll be super easy. If you've had problems in the past with writing theses, theses then um, I, I'll, I'll, I have a, a pretty foolproof method to kind of help you out there. 
Um, and last but not least, produce a narrative that describes the importance of the event in your life. So you have this significant social issue. How did it impact your life in whatever fashion? As big or as small? It could be as small as you saw it on TV, or it could be as, as huge as you know you literally experienced it in real life. Um, this is kind of the breakdown of what we're going to do over the next couple of weeks. So this project ends on September 11th, which really isn't that far away. It's like three weeks. But that's because this essay is a little bit easier than most. So we have this full week, the 22nd through the 28th, the 29th through the 4th, and the 5th through the 11th to so turn in this essay. So this week, we're just really determining our event and our issue. What is your social issue that you want to write about? Next week, we're going to write the thesis and create our rough draft. And then the following week, we'll do the peer reviews. Or, well, sort of the following week. It's like that week in the middle of all that. We'll do the peer reviews where you can kind of show people. And then your final draft for writing project one will be due on September 11th. So again, that, this is kind of an expedient, uh, an expedited, a, a sped up um, course for, for, for this assignment. Most of the time you'll have four to five weeks, but this one you only get about three. And it's because this essay is a little bit easier than the rest. Um, and of course, if you're having trouble with it, I'm always here to help. So that's kind of what my thing is. is I tr there, <laughs> You're gonna run into basically two types of instructors whenever you go into college. And one of them, I call them floodgates. And those are gonna be the people that say you have to do well in order to get by me and then there's people that are more of um, a, an assistance or a guider or a, or, a, or a leader of some kind whatever you want to call that and those are the people that I like to think of myself as is I expect you not to know anything and if you know something great good for you that makes this life makes life a little easier for you but if you don't know something I'm going to help you figure that out and I'm not just going to say hey go look at the syllabus or hey go look at the go, go read again go watch the video again I'm not going to say that, so if you ever have a question, text me, call me, Skype me, whatever, and I'll, I'll help you out. <laughs> I'm not just going to tell you, hey, go read the syllabus again. Um, so, okay, after you've checked this out, looked at the uh, Writing Project 1 guidelines, the next thing you want to do is just pull up the rubric real quick. Um, and this is, I mean, nothing really profound here. It's just how I'm going to grade your essay. You're going to have five sections, five columns, as you would. And those columns are focus, content, organization, expression, and mechanics, kind of running along top up here. Focus, that's your thesis. I'm going to grade your thesis somewhere between 0 and 10. Where, how good is your thesis? How good is the content that backs up your thesis? So all that information you put in your, your, your story and stuff, between 0 and 10, how would you rank it? Organization, how well organized are you? How good are you at using paragraphs? Between 0 and 10 again. Expression, that's your word choice, your tone, your 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 sense of audience, those things, between 0 and 10, I'll rank you again. And then finally, your punctuation, mechanics, spelling, grammar, all of those things. Uh, those will be ranked under mechanics between 0 and 10 as well. Then on the second page, I'll actually kind of spell them out. I'll say, here's what you got here, here's what you got here, 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 here. And at the end, I'll give you a grade. And then I'll also give you comments. So I'll, I, I give very explicit comments, and I give you a lot of feedback. So don't freak out the very first time you get your essay. And because you're going to have a lot, of, a lot of comments, a lot of suggestions. But that doesn't mean you had a bad grade. Most of the time, I'll only grade you one time on something. So if you miss a comma for like the entire paper, I'm not going to take off a point for every comma you missed. I'm going to take off a point for missing commas in general. Okay. All right. Let's go back to weekly course content because that's the rubric. And it's coming. So you've looked at these two already, and the first one is a discussion question. In the first person, what that means using I, me, and my, and I'll explain that a little later, write a response of 50 to 100 words in which you appeal to a police officer who has pulled you over for doing 85 miles an hour in a 50 mile an hour zone. In this response, you're trying to get the officer to let you off with only a warning. How would you do that? So here's an example. Oh, I'm sorry, officer, I was speeding because my friend was recently in a car accident. I need to get to the hospital as soon as possible. I understand. I should have been going slower, but I'm desperately trying to get to my friend. Is there any way you could possibly let me off with a warning just this one? So that's an example of what I want you to do. Basically, in 50 to 100 words, get this police officer to only give you a warning and not give you a ticket. Okay? Now, after that, this is just kind of like a prep. You will come back to this assignment. Then you watch this video on ethos, pathos, and logos. And, and um, really what that is is it's using ethics to argue. It's using logic to argue, or it's using emotion. Ethos being ethics, logos being logic, and pathos being emotion. Then purpose, audience, and genre. Check out that video. And here's uh, purpose, audience, genre part two. And then how to write a reflective narrative. Just kind of a 
to get to, to whet your appetite to, before you figure out how to do this stuff. Now, after you've watched these videos and they kind of explain things to you, now's your time to go back and now that you've watched the videos on rhetoric, that's ethos, pathos, and logos, think about your response to the police officer in discussion question one. Would you consider your response ethical, emotional, or logical? Remember that, that DQ1, that first one you did? How did you appeal to that officer? What would you, because everybody had reasons, right? You weren't just like, hey, give me a warning. <laughs> you had some kind of like, give me a warning because. Now looking at thinking, looking back at that answer and thinking in light of ethos, pathos, and logos, which one of those three, or it could be more than one, it could be two of them, it could be three of them, which one of those, those rhetorical strategies did you use kind of inadvertently um, without knowing? Uh, so explain that, explain your response, what you used and why you think you used it. Once complete, read another person's response and reply to their posting. Um, and then so talk to them about, you know, what do you think uh, about what I use? So if I said I use logic, what do you think about that? Do you think I really use logic or do you think maybe, nah, I think you used ethos or I agree with you because of whatever. When I say this right here, posting should be substantial. That is, don't just simply agree and say good job. Instead, po point out something that you agreed or disagreed with. So don't just be like, hey, good job, I agree. Be like, hey, good job, I agree with you saying this or I agree because of this. And then there's an example. Now, last but not least, here's your week one homework, rhetorical writing strategy. Um, what is a reflective narrative? So kind of after you watch my next video where I explain what a reflective narrative is and you actually watch this one, tell me what you think a reflective narrative is. What are ethos, pathos, and logos and how do they affect writing? What are purpose, audience, and genre and why are they important to consider in writing? What social issue are you going to go with? And my personal life experience, describe the experience you've had with this social issue. And that's your homework. So other than that, I think that's it for this week. So watch this video and check out my other videos down here. And um, be sure to complete the assignments by August the 21st at midnight. Or excuse me, no, 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 August 28th. Blah. This, this week starts the 22nd and it should be ending on the 28th at midnight. So turn in discussion question one, discussion question two, and your homework, your week one homework uh, by the 28th at midnight. Let me make sure I didn't forget anything. Yeah, so discussion question one up here, discussion question, discussion question two at the bottom, and then the, the week one homework. Um, other than that, uh, let me know if you guys have any questions. Um, I'm always here to help, so like I said, any time of the day you can text me. Um, you can try and call me, I just can't guarantee that I'll actually answer that, but at least with a, with a text I can answer you back, even if it's not for a while. If I'm busy, I can come back to you. Email's also good, and if you want to set up a meeting with me, come hit me up on Skype and we will do a video meeting since I can't fly out to, um, fly back out to Arizona. I just sold my house out there, so I, I don't even have anywhere to stay. So um, anyways, have a good week, guys. Um, if, you if you need anything from me, let me know, and um, I will be sure to help you out, and I will do my utmost to help you get through this class as quickly and easily and painlessly as possible.